The Oxygen Channel brings us the Prancing Elites. I wonder if black people will be able to breathe through this. The 57th Annual Grammy Awards, and yes, another whitewash. Millionaire black family in Redondo Beach, California face racist firebombing. I'm Anthony Harris. And I'm Cleo Monago. And you're listening to the Parallel Realities Podcast, Truth From The Other Side. Greetings, and as always, as we do here on the Parallel Realities Podcast, we greet you in honor of the brilliant psychiatrist Francis Cress Welsing. Cleo, do you know what's happening? I think I do, Anthony. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, We, uh, as always, we have much to talk about. And again, as we do here, we hope to inspire critical thinking. We're not telling you what to think or how to think. I guess we just want you to think and view things, I guess, outside of the box. As we, yep. as we uh, move along here, um, we can start with the Grammys, and I guess everyone's talking about that, but I think there's something you'd like to start with, as there's a, a new television show that's on the horizon uh, involving a, well, uh, uh, I, I guess, well-known in the south of the United States, in the southern states of the United States, um, a southern dance troupe. Uh, Please tell us about that as they have a, apparently there's a new show uh, coming up and involving them. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Yeah, the Oxygen Channel will be presenting to the nation a uh, group of guys called the Prancing Elites. It's a group of homosexual black men, predominantly, particularly feminine black men, who are a part of something called jet setting, which is very similar to a cheerleader troupe. The um, story is that um, men are not allowed to be um, cheerleaders, apparently, in southern schools um, to, um, you know, egg on the sports teams. So these young men decided to create their own team of um, and with predominantly homosexual black male feminine guys who dress in very vivid clothing, very similar to cheerleader outfits. And um, they have been kind of on the scene, but not really on a large scale, just mostly in Alabama, mobile Alabama to be specific. And now we get to see them on a national basis. And it's going to be interesting to see how the black community responds or silences itself more in response to this convergence of homosexual characters. The convergence includes Mm -hmm. um, the guys on on um, the Housewives of Atlanta um, and Lee Daniels' empire, and now we have uh, the press and elites. Right, I think, uh, just for clarity, I think you said jet setting. It's actually called J setting. And it, right, it, J it, setting, Yeah, yes. J setting with the J uh, and then hyphenated setting. It's, uh, I think uh, the dance team, it, 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 it kind of originates mm-hmm. from the dance team at Jackson State University in, uh, in Mississippi. And there's a there's a history there, but but what is your issue uh, apparently with that, Cleo? Well, um, my issue, <laughs> if you want to call it the issue, is that the community, as you've heard me say a billion times, has not decided to actively address this issue. Everybody else has, but our community has not. And while we are apprehensive for all kinds of reasons, which I'm real clear about, because I'm always in dialogue about different things, including this with black folks. Well, but we have humiliation, there's embarrassment. Like I've heard people already say that they're embarrassed about the the prancing elites. And frankly, the embarrassment is is not in front of each other. The embarrassment is what what, what white people think, because we don't care what each other think. Um, So there's all this concern about being embarrassed, and there's all this self-consciousness that's going on still but it's really mas- masculinity, manhood, active concern about w- the outcome of all this oppression. Current examples would be the murders of Trayvon, Michael Brown, Oscar, Oscar Grant, and we can go on and on with all these young brothers have been murdered, you know, the, the baby out in Ohio. And I think some of us unconsciously, without dialogue, feel like this is the consequence of oppression, torn up families, single parent homes with a mother, blah, 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 blah. None that's being addressed, but people are feeling humiliated. And now we got the dancing, prancing elites. Right. Well, one thing I noticed, and we'll have a much larger discussion on this particular uh, topic in a broader sense uh, a little later in the program, but I'll just 
uh, say this and we, we can move on to another topic. I'll just say this in the uh, in the promo, the trailer that the Oxygen Network uses to uh, advertise the program. Uh, you see the the prancing elites dancing uh, in, in 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 the style that they have, and, and you know these are effeminate effeminate men dressing uh, in 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 leotard, well not leotard, but you know uh, bikini type clothing. All right, so uh, you have that, and then you have people looking at them as they're dancing. Uh, there's an older white man. There's a there's a sister walking by. I guess they're in a restaurant dancing. There's a sister walking by, and she kind of <laughs> looks, then walks by, then gazes back in, and she's lured back in. There's a brother in locks looking at them, and everyone everyone's reaction <laughs> everyone's reaction is favorable. There's no there's no hostility. Everyone, even the old white man, he listens for a little while, and he even he starts moving. The brother starts moving. The sister who's looking outside the 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 the, uh, the <laughs> restaurant. She is engaged in a favorable way. I found that to be somewhat interesting and somewhat misleading. In, in reality, that's not the reality of how they are received. And 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 and, and, and you, well, you're laughing quite a bit. Why why, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing because I saw that ridiculous crap too. And yeah. I was thinking to myself, that brother and that brother with the locks, they're not even in the same room. That was a, that was taken. Th that was taken three days later. You know, he probably was dancing to Beyonce. But they put um, but they put the elites up there on the screen because you know they, they they that's that's a um, trailer, and mm -hmm. as you know, being in the business, trailers are made to bring enthusiasm and interest to a pro a, a, a product. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and, and lastly, on this particular topic, you I believe you shared a a, a photo of um, on your Facebook page. You shared a photo of a sister and a brother in 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 the same distance in the same uh, area of the prancing elites and and what did you find in that photo well the photo shows um the they're, they're sitting on one of those bleachers that you know the, the the horizontal bleachers sure and um the elites are at the top doing their thing and it's just two it's this male and female sitting together and the female is turning around using her her smartphone to take a picture and the brother's looking straight ahead looking disgusted mm. Mm -hmm. And not even paying no attention to the to, to, to the dancing elites, and and I think that that's a more a more accurate depiction of what would and can occur in the presence of these of these young men. Right, right. Okay, we'll have more on this particular topic a little later on, and we br we're bringing all of this up, and, and again we'll get into more context later. But we're bringing all of this up not to condemn any of that. We just you you mentioned earlier, the discussion needs to happen. So there's no discussion mm -hmm. taking place, and it's just, I mean, some people may feel as though this is being crammed down our throats, and people are being forced to like it, and there's no context, and there's no discussion about it. So we're trying to bring some sort of discussion and some sort of context to it so there can be some sort of reality uh, presented. Again, we'll have more on that a bit later. But moving on in this first segment, the 57th Annual Grammys took place uh, recently, and I think we really got an opportunity to see, uh, I, I even uh, texted a friend saying, I guess black music is dead. Very little uh, representation of the history of black music. Usher did sing a Stevie Wonder song, which was beautiful. And Stevie came up and played a few riffs of the, harmoni of his, uh, of the harmonica, which was nice. Uh, but really, uh, a really uh, a, a whitewash of, uh, of black music, and that really continued from last year's Grammys when Macklemore uh, took a whole lot of things. But one thing that was really of note uh, in terms of the Grammys, and I know, Cleo, you didn't watch it. I watched it because I was watching it with friends, but the thing that really uh, stuck, struck with me, rather, uh, was Beyonce, the, towards the end of the uh, Grammys, Beyonce sings uh, Precious Lord from the movie Selma, which was sung, made famous by Mahalia Jackson. Now, for those of you who saw Selma, you'd know that Lettucey portrayed Mahalia Jackson in the movie, and she actually sung the song. I think it's on the, 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 the title track, the CD of the movie. Okay, so for some reason, uh, they Beyonce was chosen to sing that song, and even fans of Beyonce, the so-called Beehive, some fans of hers had an issue with the way she sung it because it was it did it did not you know the song is a very powerful emotional gospel song that Mahalia kicked butt on, and Lettucey did a very good job on it as well. Be uh, Beyonce couldn't pull that off. <laughs> Beyonce couldn't pull that off, and and as I said, even even fans of hers admitted that. 
Unfortunately, right after that, uh, or, or not too long after that, or somewhere in, in, in within the minutes uh, following or preceding that, or, or before that, um, uh, Common and John Legend sung their song, uh, the, 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 the song, the title song for the movie um, Selma. Uh, not the title song, but the, one of the more popular songs for the movie Selma. They sung that, and no one came in to replace them. They sung the song. But it was just two of them. They didn't bring Usher to do it. They didn't have Paul, Paul McCartney do it. Some, they did it. So I just found that really unfortunate. It was an unfortunate moment. It would have been a great opportunity for two sisters to join in singing that song together. And Beyonce gets a lot of spotlight on her own anyway. I don't think she needs any more spotlight on her. She, she, you know, people love her. I think that's clear. <laughs> and uh, it would have been really nice to see the two of them get up there and sing that. Any thoughts? I know you didn't see it, clear, but any thoughts you have on that? I'm over here trying not to yawn, not, be, not because not because of you and your delivery, but because white supremacy is in the house doing what it does, and we we, we need to start talk, calling it what it is and and understanding that this whole thing is built around other people's agenda and not what's pure, decent, and logical, and what's even best. Because I mean, I don't want to say too much about Beyonce because. You know, I might start a war, a world <laughs> war, but but the girl can't sing. I'm just gonna say that now. Mm -hmm. So the I can't even imagine Beyonce, who can barely sing, in my opinion, singing anything let us see sung, let alone Mahalia Jackson. That must have been. I bet you Stevie Wonder was not only blind, but probably wish he was deaf. <laughs> when I when I was going on, man. Yeah. That sounds crazy, but I didn't see it. Yeah. I was doing something else. Yeah, it was a tough watch. Uh, I mean, again, and, and there were times I was flipping away from it, uh, but it, it was a tough watch. And, and, and I even had people texting me saying, what is she doing? <laughs> you know, what's going on? You know, it, you know, people need to, I guess the classic line, sometimes you need to stay in your lane and realize uh, what you can and cannot do. But again, well, it's... Beyonce, well, Beyonce was under the impression that she can sing. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, she don't know that she can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. And and to Lettucey's credit, because as as to be expected, the media uh, hopped all over this, and Twitter was ablaze over it as well. But uh, to Lettucey's credit, she uh, her comments were that um, uh, she says that uh, what I will say and what I'm excited about is that I had the pleasure of playing an iconic figure in the movie Selma and the song "Take My Hand, Precious Lord." It's been going on forever, starting with the Queen Mahalia Jackson, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Then I was able to portray and sing my version of the song, and now we have Beyonce. Her generation will now know the song, so I'm a part of history. So she took a, a, a classy way of looking at it and not feeding into uh, and giving really the media what they wanted to, sh to stoke a controversy and, and pit two black women at odds. We certainly have enough, enough of that. So that was that was a classy move on Lettucey's part. But again, it would have been nice to see Beyonce, who's got enough shine and enough light on her to uh, to share the spotlight with uh, the woman who actually sung the song, who was chosen to sing the song in the movie. That would have been really, really nice to see. I guess I'm I guess I'm fantasizing. Yeah, you are. OK, you're listening to the Parallel Realities podcast. Truth from the other side. Man, have you heard about that family in uh, Redondo Beach, California? Uh, it was a millionaire family. Um, the mo mother and father are both very successful. I think the father is a doctor, the mother is an attorney, something like that. And they have like three or four children. And they uh, bought a home, a $3 million home in the um, beach area of Southern California. And their homes were firebombed. Did you hear about that? I did. I did actually come across that uh, in Manhattan Beach, California. Ronald and Melissa Clinton. Uh, their $200,000 home was firebombed uh, a week ago, and they they uh, 
they consider moving away a while back, but convinced that they, uh, or, I'm, I'm sorry, they're considering moving now, obviously, and they are convinced that this was a hate crime. As a result of that, they have, um, they have uh, uh, three children, uh, two boys and a girl, and um, you know that that that's what happened. I guess your angle there, and just looking at the damage, it's really really bad really really bad damage yeah, yeah i want to correct something um respectfully their home was worth three million but the damage done was two hundred thousand thank you thank you yeah my bad work yeah. of damage yeah yeah good. yeah the home is worth three and a half million the damage was two hundred thousand right. dollars yes thank you yeah and what 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 came to mind I mean, there's been a the, the few people that do know about this there's been an interesting conversation one of the conversations i heard was well, why would they want to live in a white community and I was, and I very gladly intervened in that conversation because to make a long story short, when I was a child, we, my family had some friends who lived on the beach that were black in Seattle, Washington. And I remember being about five years old, being in awe of this, of this two-story blue home under this blue sky with this blue ocean behind their home. And I've wanted to live on the ocean ever, ever since then. And, and, and I guess I got the opportunity to live on the ocean in Santa Monica Beach at, with my first apartment. That's a whole nother story. But the bottom line is that I left finally due to racist harassment as they have mm. and we should be able to live where we want to live and i prefer to live around black people but i couldn't find black folks in the ocean too so i went where the ocean was and um you know white people always have the most choice areas wherever we are in this country but yeah. um this is crazy yeah just some comments from uh, ronald clinton uh the father he says i don't have proof i don't have any type of motive but i do have a gut and certainly he's saying that his gut tells him that uh this was uh, not coincidental or a mistake. He goes on mm -hmm. to say, he goes on to say, and I tell you, my gut tells me this was racially motivated, and it was somebody that had the intent to harm, injure. I'm sorry, it it was, and it was somebody that had the intent to harm, injure, or even kill us. We have no enemies. Why us? Now the Manhattan Beach uh, uh, community, the population is 84 percent white. He is a pharmacist. He was asleep when the attack occurred. His wife is a corporate lawyer, and she was away on business at the time. He quickly got his three children up, grabbed the family dog, and ran outside. He then used a garden hose to douse the flames at the front of the house until firefighters arrived to finish the job. Yeah, well, it sounds like um, Rosewood all over again. And what I mean by that is, and so-called Black Wall Street in Oklahoma, is that you have black people who have the wherewithal to build success and wealth and mind in their own business, because they're minding their own business in Rosewood and in Black Wall Street, et cetera, as well. They were minding their own but they weren't they weren't talking to anybody. But there were some white folks who didn't have as much because even in Redondo Beach area, I'm very familiar with the area because I'm from Southern California, three million dollars is at the top end of that community's you know, um, home. So they were living above most of the people of that area. Yeah. And so, and somebody said, wait a minute, we ain't going to have Barack Obama and these people in my neighborhood living large like this in a way that I can't challenging the myth that I need to believe in of white supremacy. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's briefly or contrast this, uh, this tragedy to the Clinton family in uh, in Manhattan Beach, uh, California. Let's contrast that with what's happening in many uh, black communities with gentrification. Now, I live in Harlem and I've heard sporadically, very, very sporadically, uh, little entanglements uh, that white people have faced. And again, I, I stress very sporadically where they've had uh, moments where they've been confronted uh, uh, and, 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 and quote unquote harassed, but nothing to the extent where uh, a white family has had their house burned down because they moved into the black community. Uh, I do recall a situation, um, I think a, uh, about over the summer, about eight months ago, where um, uh, two, uh, two, two sisters uh, harassed uh, a black, uh, I'm sorry, harassed a white family in in a in a, uh, in a in a in a in a house, and ordered them to get out and, and that type of that type of situation. But again, it's not nothing to the extent where the house was burned down and, and and that type of thing. My point is is that you rarely see that type of action from black people uh, in regards to uh, 
threats from white people. I'm talking. I'm talking about severe threats or perceived threats from white people in terms of uh, relocation from their homes or 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 an onset of white people moving into the community. And I personally think there's a different dynamic. Harlem is historically black. Um, it has historically been some place where black people could determine the culture and what occurs. As you know, many historical figures came out of Harlem and some powerful, historically relevant transformation has come out of that area. And it's, and it's, and it's basically um, a sacred space for us. Ain't nothing sacred about Manhattan Beach. Um, it's a big, sprawling community where black people living there particularly the kind of with the kind of money that's needed it's, it's not going to change that that community it's nothing it's just different i mean black people feel intruded upon because when white people come they do a scorched earth displacement process black, black folks ain't gonna displace nobody in manhattan beach another thing to think about too is that um harlem you're right you know in terms of the uh you know, historically Harlem, but Harlem has never really been owned by black people. There have been, right, uh, yeah, right. yeah. So, so that 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 is that is part, and, and you know, and that's part of the problem. That's that's a whole another discussion in itself. But that's part of the uh, the uh, the challenges that that we as a community face here. Again, it's just really, really kind of interesting how that whole dynamic plays out. And and there have been rumors even here in Harlem that some businesses have been burned down. A very famous. Uh, uh, Diner, not from not very far from where I live, used to be called Pan Pan. Years ago, was kind of mysteriously burnt down, and and to to this date, there's been nothing put up there. But the rumor is, and the word on the street is that it's for housing that event that that will eventually come up. Again, that's the word on the street. But the the place was burned down, and the owners of it have were kind of left confused as to why the fire was started. So, so those things do happen. Uh, what, what, what do you think, Cleo, in terms of the, the Clinton family? How do you, how, it, what kind of wake-up call is this for them? If, if they needed one, I'm not assuming, and I'm not trying to speak for them. How will this, because they have children, and, and I, from the pictures, their children look about teenage uh, age. How do you see them um, moving forward in, as a result of this? Well, it's a very beautiful black family, as you, as you, as you can see. Uh, undeniably black, frankly. Um, I think they already have a wake up call. I mean, the, unlike unlike um, Trayvon Martin's family, who said, "Oh, race has nothing to do with it." They didn't go there. They said race has, definitely has something to do with it. I, I feel it in my gut. So no, they, uh, they're ready and prepared. I think that they they are these wonderful types of black people that have entitlement consciousness, that feel entitled to the fruits of the earth and having whatever they think they need to live and and the best of everything. So they already feel entitled. Um, like I said, they're undeniably black. They nobody look mixed or nothing like nothing like that. And um, these are some very very healthy black people. So I think they're fine. I think they got they're gonna have to figure out what to do in a racist country while wanting to do what they want to do and live what they want to live that they can afford to do. They, they I think they're gonna be very concerned about that going forward. Yeah, yeah. And what can they? What what what, what in in terms of the uh, the broader message, not just for this family. Say there's a family similar to them living living in a in a nice home and well-to-do home in Atlanta, in New York City, in in other areas of the country. Is that a wake-up call for them as well? I hope so. I mean, all I can do is recommend that black people educate their children about what, these kind of things and stop just praying it away and being silent in the midst of blatant racism and alert their kids of their value and their worth so they won't get confused by th this whole thing and um, protect themselves and make sure that they're protected wherever they live because I used to live on the beach as I mentioned before and I was harassed all the time. I've never taken a drug in my entire life but I was investigated for drug trafficking and the person that was trafficking drugs who was on my floor was a young white boy who lived in the end unit. But they came to me and I would, when I would walk to the store, I would be put over, where are you going? What are you doing here? So, you know, racism is alive and well. And hopefully in 2015, with something like this happening, we'll stop being in denial about it. Right. You may recall that the, uh, the New York Times uh, columnist, columnist, rather, Charles Blow, and he's been frequented on many uh, news, news programs, MSNBC in particular, and I believe also CNN, 
His son, who、uh, goes to Yale, his son was harassed by the police, and he、uh, put it on Twitter, and he was very outraged by it. But beyond outrage, what、uh, what is a more effective kind of thing that can actually be done in this situation? Well. Yeah, All, I gave the best advice I can give. I mean, when you live, when you're in a predominantly white neighborhood like that, there's risk of dealing with blatant racism or more、um, clandestine, clandestine racism. So awareness is the best thing, and protection. You know, make sure you have an alarm on your house and 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 have other types of protection legally too. <laughs> okay, you're listening to the Parallel Realities podcast. Yeah, man, I think it's、um, interesting that、uh, the black community, in the midst of its silence, has now has three homosexual-focused, high-profile. Well, I think the the, the, the、um, elites will become a high-profile show. That's my prediction because white people are going to see to it. But black people have to contend with three shows that feature black men. In particular, effeminate black men in the housewives thing, and in the elites, and it's going to be interesting to see what we finally do in the midst of that. I already heard some of the whisperings, and the Pan Africanist community is going off.、Mm. Uh, well, well, members of the Pan Africanist community. Unfortunately, that's not just one mind. There's several perspectives, but the perspective that I'm talking about right now is the one is the, of the conspiracy, the effeminization of the black man.、Uh, we don't have that kind of stuff in Africa. Now, these folks are from Cleveland, but they know all about Africa. But we, we, there's no feminine black men in Africa. There's no homosexual. All these people are such experts on homosexuality, and all these heterosexual homosexual、um, experts are coming out, pardon the pun, out of the closet <laughs> again. <laughs> you know, given the、um, all this homosexual blackness on display. Well, so, so I I just think it's interesting. I, I hope, and I'm gonna do what I can. To help the community have some rational conversation, finally, because we we need to. Well, what is the result of the irrational or lack of conversation on this particular po- topic? What is the, what is the what is the result? What 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 uh, what what uh, what is happening because of that? Well, I think a potential result of, of any kind of silence in the midst of Being disturbed or disagreement or hate, if you will, in some instances, violence can can, can occur. People can get beat up.、Um, there's already a division between Samjian loving people, or some Samjian loving people and black people, because of feeling host, hostile attitudes, the church stuff,、um, anti anti homosexual behavior, or what's more common, the ignoring. The absolute ignoring of this community, which is what the what the black people keep doing, even in the midst of this stuff being put in our face, so it creates a se- a sense of、um, conflict internally to send your loving people, and inside of the community of people who don't who are quote unquote against this. There's a, there's a tick tick boom phenomenon going on where somebody something's going to explode. Right. Okay. And 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 the final thing I want to say is that、mm-hmm. in each of these instances, these are not black people putting this stuff on display. This is white people continuing to control the narrative of black lives, and in this instance, the the narrative of same gender loving people and black people's relationship to them. Because in in as you know in、um, Empire, a character a, a same gender loving boy is thrown in the trash. Right. 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 Well, I, I guess. Well, I guess.、Uh, well, let's let's go back to the prancing elites for a minute.、Um, 
I read some of the comments and some of the articles announcing that the, that Oxygen would be, be would be doing the program on this particular topic, and some of the comments were favorable. Um, there didn't seem to be an issue with it. Uh, people were, were were cool about it. So, are you are, are you saying that? Uh, oh, well, let me just ask you point blank. Do you think you're making too much of this? Do you think that oh, as with everything else, things will evolve, and people will become more accepting of it? Well, what, what, what is this? Everything else, people are evolved. I mean, the, the Clintons just got their house blown up. So, wh- what what has evolved? <laughs> well, I mean, there are always going to be remnants of those things. I mean, we have, I mean, you know, we have uh, s- spot things happening here and there, and, and and that will always be the case. But in terms of the overall uh, energy of of that kind of, uh, I guess, hate. And response is not overwhelming as it used to be. Well, I don't think that's true, and I w- and I'm very interested in seeing what you saw because I saw hate speech, and I don't know who said what you saw. What you which what you saw could have been homosexuals approving of themselves, mm-hmm. as opposed to heterosexual people saying this is no problem. Now I don't know, right. but I have heard homosexuals. Um, not a whole lot, frankly, because there's a lot of homosexuals who feel concerned about this, too, particularly the, the ones who are concerned about femininity issues, which goes across the board with regards to sexuality in this country. Right. Well, but let... I've seen I've seen favorable comments, too. OK. But it was not from it was from within people that that resonate with, with feminine men. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Some people said I love it. Some people said very good. Can't wait for this premiere. So, again, I, I don't know. They, they didn't say, hey, I'm. I'm one of them. They didn't say any of that, so we don't know. But uh, and, and moving along with this particular uh, topic, what? Uh, well, I'll just say this: that I um, I agree that, that there's there's not a balance. And we talked about this last week in discussing uh, Lee Daniels and Empire. There's no real balance in terms of what what's really going on in terms of the character Terrence Howard and and what really that fear is about. Because when you're fearful you respond in, a, in an aggressive way because you're trying to protect something. So I think, yep. I think uh, there needs to be a discussion. There needs to be a discussion on what the black community is trying to protect. And, yep. and I think I said this to you uh, either, in, either uh, during the show or an off the air conversation where that initial conversation is going to be heated <laughs> you know, that very first step into that water, if you will, is going to be very, very heated. And so I, I think there needs to be several conversations. Can't just be one and then we keep on moving. It, it needs to keep happening. And, and I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's ready to have that. I think everybody is. What's, what's problematic, though, for example, and I hope this makes sense, you mentioned earlier about Beyonce singing that song by Mahalia Jackson. That was not a that was not a totally black decision. That was a media corporate um, decision based on people's quote unquote fame, not based on what's logical and what's best. And how that's relevant to this is that whoever presents this conversation has to know how to do it, and it has to be presented in ways that's logical and best, not based on politics. Yeah. Well. Um... And that's a challenge in this country because black people are not stepping in. There's not a precedence that's been set. So we'll be really lucky if when the conversation does occur on a larger scale, it ain't some, it ain't, what's his name, um, homeboy from CNN. Uh, Don Lemon. Don Lemon being the moderator. Yeah. That, yeah. Would be, that would be horrible. Yeah. You know, just to go back, just to backtrack a bit, and we were kind of um, uh, tight there in the first segment. But you, you mentioned Beyonce, and I just wanted to go back to, to the Grammys for a second. Um, uh, no real reference, no overt sustained uh, direct message about Ferguson, Black Lives Matter, or, or the mm-hmm. violence that has taken place over the few years. Now, uh, there were brief moments when in the song that Common and uh, John Legend sing from the Selma movie, they mentioned Ferguson because it's in the song. Uh, right. During Pharrell's performance when he sung his award-winning song, Happy, he had uh, his dance... He sung that? Yeah, he oh. sung that. He had, his, he had his dance troupe. He had his dance troupe raise their arms 
uh, in in similar to the I to the uh, hands up don't shoot movement, but no one you know no one pulled off an I can't breathe T-shirt during that moment. No one you know no one put up a Black Power salute or anything like that in that moment. And I believe there was one other oh Prince Prince when he got up to uh, announce an award winner, he said something like uh, uh, books books should matter uh, albums. I'm sorry I'm, I'm not quoting this pro- uh, exactly, but his line was. Something to the effect of books should matter just like black lives should matter. Just that one comment, you, you, you contrast that with domestic violence. Again, domestic violence has been a big issue, uh, I guess, because Ray Rice was the poster boy for it, regardless of what the Alabama judge did or other prominent white men have done. Um, right. Ray Rice appears to be the poster boy for it, and so everyone's up against that. The, they had President Obama have a, uh, 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 a taped speech about the importance of addressing domestic violence and telling people to go to this website. They had a domestic violence uh, survivor, a white woman, get up there and, and give a, a, a long speech about what she went through. I'm not, I'm not demeaning what she went through. I'm just presenting it as fact and, and contrasting it and trying to provide some sort of analysis in terms of the lack of... Con- a lack of uh, 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 wording during the Grammys about this Black Lives Matter movement. So I found that interesting and somewhat disappointing as well. Um, I know you didn't see the, the Grammys, but if you can, just briefly talk on that, what I just shared with you. <clears throat> well, you have a strong stomach, my brother. You really you really do, because um, I wouldn't have expected, I would have been disappointed because I would have expected what occurred to occur, that they are trying to squash that Black Lives Matter message as soon as they can because it disrupts white supremacy and the complacency that a lot of us are in in the midst, in the midst of that. So it's, it's, it is doing what they're doing. I mean, you already mentioned earlier in the show about how whitewashed it was. Well, it was whitewashed last year, I'm told. It was whitewashed the year before that, I'm told. And it's getting whiter and whiter, I'm told. And black people are becoming the producers and the writers and the ones who help white people sound good and it's basically high-tech slavery again yeah yeah okay so no surprise with any of that i just wanted to point that out yeah i just wanted to point that out but getting back to this other discussion and we're seeing a lot of high profile i guess your point is we're seeing a lot of high profile black homosexuals in 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 mainstream and in television and in that whole thing what's wrong with that um it, it could be seen as just okay the world is becoming more accepting of that and what's really wrong with that well as you've heard me mention many many times black people have a particular experience in this country we are in process of repair we went from slave three-fourths of a human being to color to negra to negro to afro-american to black to african-american and as, as as tedious as that sounds it's an important process of self self you know self determination and knowing who we are on our terms so we're still in that process when it comes to sexuality and, and same gender loving people we're in a process that we won't that we will not initiate that keeps us behind the times that keeps us underdeveloped as a people so when you bring an underdeveloped to people when you have there's no prancing asians there's not even no pr- no prancing white men there's not even no prancy Native Americans. Uh, on, on all of the housewives shows on TV, only the black one has men dressing in, in, in women's clothing. There's something to that. Well, I think, I think you and I had this discussion a while back. There have been white men who've dressed in women's clothing. So, I mean, it's not, this is not a new phenomenon. I mean, there have been white men who've dressed in women's clothing. And, and, and no. Go ahead. No, no. What is a new phenomenon, and only black people have done it, is a white. There is no white, fit, feminine male cheerleading squad. Okay, and and well, there, but, there, are, there are there are there are no prancing Caucasians. Okay, but what's your overall point? Because I I don't I'm not sure if you're addressing my my my, my question though. There my have there have point, been there have been white men who've dressed in in women's clothing. I mean, Dustin Hoffman. We can go down the list. And Dustin Hoffman in in Tootsie. Uh, we have I okay. Mean, there's a whole no, okay, bunch. Let's, okay, well, okay. Well, let's start with Dustin Hoffman, Dustin Hoffman and Tootsie. Can you hear me? I hear you well. The audio, yeah. All right? yeah, you're fine. Okay, let's start with that. And Dustin Hoffman with Tootsie and in Miss Doubtfire, these were heterosexual, loving black men who were who loved their children and who were heterosexual and who were doing what they could do to get with the women that they loved. White men. They were white. White men. Th- these were white men. They yeah. they were glorified. 
they were really heterosexual and they were being celebrated and love and love and this essence white love was being affirmed promoted and celebrated that's not what the prancing elites are doing right well what are they doing what they're doing is dancing around on tv feminine or fe- feminine in a society that doesn't have enough balance in terms of how black people are portrayed they, they are there's an imbalance okay. and there's something wrong with th- there being an imbalance i would have no problem them prancing in nowhere if there was balance mm. Mm. but there is none and then you have black men who are um being killed and being criminalized or chasing white women and all these shows and now they're prancing that's why I love uh, Marshawn, what's his name? Marshawn Lynch, Marshawn Lynch, from Marshawn Seattle Seahawks. Lynch, yeah. And it's not his machismo and masculinity that people would assume that I'm praising. No, it's that he ain't taking their stuff. Mm-hmm. And, he ain't, and he ain't letting them control his voice. And he not letting them be the ones who run what he does. He's running his own, uh, his life on his own terms. And that's what I love. Mm-hmm. The, the prancing elites might be seen as doing that. But the prancing elites are not being presented to us by and for black people they are a spectacle Mm -hmm. okay let's uh let's take a brief uh break you're listening to the parallel realities podcast Cleo, uh, last segment, you talked about uh, the appearance of black homosexuals living life on their own terms. And you mentioned how you admire Marshawn Lynch and the way he does not allow the media to um, present him in any way that they want. It's on his terms. Let me ask you, in terms of we're seeing uh, uh, the transgendered community is is seeing uh, some spotlight now. There's uh, Janet Mock who uh, has written a book, she's on a lot of talk shows, she has an internet program on MSNBC, she's getting a lot of spotlight. And, and again, from the appearances, and, and, and you know, uh, I'm not uh, casting any sort of perspective either way, from the appearances, you, she's running her life, she's living life on her terms, she's being accepted by the world, or, or whether they accept her or not, she's living the way she wants to live. Uh, then you have Laverne Cox, who uh, stars in the movie and the TV series on Netflix, Orange is the New Black. I call that a female version of Oz, the HBO series, but she is winning awards. She's out there. She's on the cover of Time, I believe, last year. She's getting all types of love. And again, living life on her terms, this is, how she, this is who she is, and the world seems to appreciate her. So is that a mixed message that black people are getting, or, or, or is there something else that you see? Uh, At the risk of being redundant, the media landscape is racist. The media landscape does not show black people loving each other, affirming each other. It does not show black men or black women in in very positive or affirming or non-toxic light. And there is no black male equivalent to um, these, these transgender people who you're talking about who um, have these shows. There's no balance. And also, the other issue which I think is important to discern is that there are, most transgender people are white. Where are the white white transgender shows? I think there's something to the perpetual profiling of black people as the transgender poster children. From RuPaul to Mock to um, the, the woman you just mentioned from, from the Orange is a New Black show. There's something to that. And, 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 and whether there's something to that intently or not, and I think it is intentional, it is a pattern that cannot be denied. Okay. There are, there are um, transgendered white folks all over the place. Right. Well, will you, I mean, well, let's, 
Well, what do you think the, the whole thing is? I think that there is a perpetual tendency to create conflict in the black community, to control the black image, to emasculate the black male, to, to, to throw into un unstabilization and some level of questioning the black, black male's capacity to be male and all the males on TV, particularly the homosexual males, they all are with white people, every single solitary one of them. Right, right. And we haven't, I, I haven't seen who um, Laverne is with, but I know Mock is with some biracial looking person. And um, it, it doesn't emulate classic black on black love. And this is a perpetual thing. So the issue is not against them. Let me be clear. I'm not against them. I'm against the lack of balance and the pattern and the ironies. Again, the irony here is that there are no white, no white men given a white racist white ran society there are no white people who are in these positions and white people are in every other position right i believe uh i believe laverne cox has gone on the record she has not uh come out publicly publicly with the person she's dating but i believe she has said that it's a jewish person that uh, yeah, she figures that she is dating uh, yeah, there are many people who, who have this way of thinking that homosexuality, homosexuality was caused by Europeans and whites, and they brought it to Africa. So this whole idea of them not being, of black homosexuals not being with black people is not unusual to them because white folks brought it to us anyway. Right. I mean, uh, clearly I, I know that perspective, but that's a, that, that's a bias, reactionary fear-based perspective, because if, if they really believe that, for example, they would have the balls to have a conversation with me about it. Because I can, I can address it articulately and clearly and with, with, with some information, but they're afraid to have the conversation, which means they really don't believe what they say they believe, because if they did, they would just effortlessly address it. Usually when these types talk about it, it's an anger, it's reactionary. Sometimes it's 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 it's, hyster it's hysteric. It's you know they're using histrionics. Yeah. So when people got to go there, they're not really sure about what's going on. They come from a place of shame and fear. Right. Well, I I, I will I will say this. Uh, you know, if you live long enough, long enough, you learn to realize that everyone doesn't think like you, and then you also also come to realize that some people are, are just going to stay set in their ways, especially as you get older. So people will write stuff off and just say, that is what it is. I believe it. You can't persuade me or sway me any other way. So that may be what you're, what you're confronting. Well, my, go my goal, to be clear, in case there's listeners who think it's not to sway anybody. My goal is to have a rational conversation. That's my goal. Let's, if you really believe your perspective, then rationally bring it. Let's, let's do it. But it's not rational. Mm -hmm. And, I've, and I've, 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 I've witnessed it and engaged it on, on the level enough to realize at this late in date that they're not being rational and they don't know what they're talking about. Like, that's why I said earlier that these, these Afro, Afrocentric people from from Schenectady, New York, you know, they don't know nothing about Africa. It's all it's all reactionary, romantic and reaction to white supremacy and humiliation and powerlessness or the perception of powerlessness in this country. And and so I know that given how underdeveloped the the central loving black community is in terms of dialogue, the things I'm saying might might sound on the surface without listening, like this anti homosexual stuff. But I haven't said a darn thing that's anti homosexual. I'm not put down Cox or put down Mock. I said that there are white transgender people. Where are they? Hmm. Why are why do do they not have shows and why are they not being constantly profiled? And I think the answer to that is based on some kind of race reaction and agenda. Why people are orchestrating all of this, every bit of it, even the prancing elites, uh, Lee Daniels, Robert, Robert, he's a puppet for Rupert Murdoch, and um, the, the, that show that 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 horrendous show called House Weaves of Atlanta. That's what I call it. <laughs> Um, it's a <laughs> horrific, crazy, dysfunctional, wannabe classes, bunch of dramatic crap. <laughs> and it's, and it's like, you know, black people's perspective of themselves, let alone other people's perspective, but our perspective of ourselves makes the most difference to me. It's, it's just on the chopping block. It's mm -hmm. on the chopping block. So I can sit here and, 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 and praise my, to me, and let me make, make this real clear. Mock 
and Laverne do not affirm blackness or black people. And that's a fact. Uh, can you speak a little more on that? They don't talk about being black. Everything is gay, gay, lesbian, transgender, transgender, transgender. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're being the poster children for a racist community that's actively dismissive of relevant black issues. But you got, got a Jewish Mary, uh, transgender person with blonde hair getting awards. Mm-hmm. It's dysfunctional. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not enough balance. If I saw a brother who was pro-black and loved black people, who had a black partner and could speak to the importance of black, it's mattering not because it's trendy, but because they understand the situation we lived in. I could get with that, even if, even if they were transgender. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's not. But that's not what we get. What we get is some white boy loving, blonde hair waving, black discounting person who's getting all this applause because they got on the dress. You do understand what I'm saying, though, and I, I, I don't want this to become a circular conversation. I don't want to keep where we keep repeating my repeating ourselves. But uh, you do hear me when I say that those who are staunchly against homosexuality, and bu- I'm talking black homosexuality, sure. they're, they're sitting there and they're saying, see, this is why we don't want to have, we don't, this is why we don't like black men being homosexual. Well, what they like frankly is irrelevant what is is what is well what they're the against bottom- what they're against because you want this discussion so they are saying to you the reason why we ain't going to have no discussion is because look at what's happening <laughs> you know so that's that well that's not what they're saying i mean frankly i wish they were at least that honest and that clear no mostly they the ones that come to mind play games lie don't listen make up stuff about homosexuality that's not even true and they play this power game and frankly a lot of them are frankly are are are, are homosexuals who are in 10th level they have 10th level reactions to, to trying to disassociate them like like eddie long i mentioned you before but eddie long used to have unsolicited full parades walking down peace tree in mlk with his parishioners with signs against homosexuality and was ju- had just left the penis. <laughs> so point, so, point well know, made. <laughs> so you know, you know, people. And trust me, community. Anybody who wakes up in the morning and goes to sleep obsessed with homosexuality has a personal issue that's driving them that they are either too ashamed or too repressed to address and make a part of their rhetoric. Well, who are those people who are waking up obsessed with homosexuality I mean, in the black community? I don't, want to get, I don't even want to get, I don't even want to give them any, any, any press. I'm not okay. saying who they are. Okay. I'm just saying on a, as a, just a central message is that we need to have a conversation about this and that we not having a conversation about this has to do with shame, has to do with a lot of people who have gone through some bad experiences with some in some cases molestation has to do with religious guilt has to do with all these hang-ups that racism and white supremacy has given us that gets in the way of a lot of us a lot of issues that we need to be having rational conversations about that'll heal us and transform us right now we're tripping and now here come the prancing elites yeah yeah before we wrap up just one other thing i want to point out and this is um this is still related to the to the conversation uh you're familiar with cuba gooding jr right cleo yeah, speaking of prance and elites, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, well, perhaps you're not surprised by this. Uh, there's a photo uh, from a British award show that took place uh, recently where Stephen Fry, who is admittedly homosexual and is actually marrying his partner, kisses uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. on the cheek uh, during, it looks like the cheek, <laughs> um, uh, during... Which, uh, which, she, which cheek? Uh, so you stop. Let me stop. Go on. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. It's an honor to be here to present this award. However, before I do, can I say how deeply hurt I was that you didn't choose to kiss me earlier, Stephen? (laughs) What, a black man? Hey. No! Well, when I said speaking of Prance and Elites, I mentioned, what I meant by that was that and you ask that, you, you know, sometimes I, I got to make, make sure I don't sound too abusive or mean when I talk about these people. So I got to I have to back off and try to be more decent. And I really need to do that, actively do that in my in my responses. So let me breathe. 
and say it like this. Cuba Gooding is married to white people. He often is w w around white people, surrounded by whiteness, clearly it finds whiteness to be appealing and important more so than black people because you rarely see it with black people except when he's acting so um it, i can imagine him being in a picture like that no problem because he is they're white you know and and he wants to make sure that he always has their approval that's the that's the impression i, I get from him and lastly you mentioned that uh, you talked about the whole transgender the whole black transgender thing and how it's happening and taking place here you are familiar with Bruce Jenner and kind of what he's been going through. It's been well documented. Supposedly, his transgender situation will turn into a, uh, a, uh, a docu-series. So um, this is a white man who is uh, transitioning, and uh, his, his, uh, that will turn into a, uh, a docu-series, his transition to a woman. So... I'm not trying to, to play tit for tat with you, but I'm just saying that that that, that is taking place in, in the white community. Well, I don't know that much about that at all, to tell you the truth. I, I don't pay attention to Bruce Jenner or what he's doing, so I don't know. But but, I, but this is this will be the equivalent of Laverne Cox. If Bruce Jenner got, had a, got an Afro wig and became transgender in a way that emulated a, a, a sister and had Dante on his arm, and, and got up on TV talking about black issues all the time and not issues relevant to white folks and who and where he came from, that would be the equivalent. But that, he's, that he is a historical athlete that's going to have a documentary done on his transition is different than constantly being on TV talking about transgender, this transgender, that, and um, with his, with his uh, Jewish partner hidden somewhere. Right. Well, on that on that note, Cleo, you should probably drop the mic because you made your point. <laughs> You've made your point very well, and uh, and, and I, I certainly understand where you're coming from. Before we wrap up, any final comments? Thank you for the conversation. Uh, on my way abroad, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay. And uh, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about. Okay. Enjoy your trip. Safe travel, and be well. You, you do the same, Anthony. Take care. Okay. You too. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at ParallelRealitiesPodcast at gmail.com. You can, of course, like us on Facebook, and you can follow us on Twitter at Parallel Realities. That's at Parallel Realities.